Welcome back, everybody. It's Easy Easy Street Gaming. Decided to take another one of our road trips. Left Damage Inc. and we found an awesome clan called Ultimate Goal. <clears throat> Twenty-one War Win Streak. Just think about that for a second. Twenty-one in a row. They're a level eleven clan. They're not just starting out. Just an awesome clan. And so what I wanted to do is explain how you can get to 21 wins in a row, how they do it. I know most people think it's just an engineer clan and probably a bunch of kids from China that just have these crazy lopsided bases, but it's really not. They have a great system, um, a great group of guys. Uh, and on that note, I wanted to thank, I believe his name is Ah, A-W-E. Uh, he's the one who invited me into the clan and uh, had a couple really cool guys when I first got there. One was Mr. Tang, the other one was Jeff. He's He was uh, pretty much the one in charge when I was in there. Uh, <laughs> had a pretty funny uh, experience. There's a couple guys that are building uh, new accounts. One of them was uh, called One Cannon Push. And you know you think this, the the name is self-explanatory, but I, I guess I didn't get it because we were talking about uh, how he was going to upgrade. And uh, you know how I think, even with uh, the engineered bases, I, I, I'm still thinking you put traps on, you put the Tesla towers up, you put the air defenses up. That way you're not completely defenseless. I guess I didn't get the one cannon push. <laughs> anyway, we're going to show some war attacks. They had some great war attacks. This one right here is by uh, Pickpocket. He did uh, Town Hall 10 Hog Attack, Go Ho Attack. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really going to get into the attack details too much. Um, just got some good attacks to watch during the video. And I'm, what I am going to go over is how they get all these wins. Because they have a pretty specific way that they're doing it. And maybe this is something that uh, you should think about with your clan. Um, I know that I'm considering something like it, you know. Uh, anyway, when I joined, there were several other players that were joining. Uh, they, they actually were filtering players in and out pretty quickly because they are really strict on who they bring to war. <clears throat> so as soon as people would join, they would do challenge attacks, the friendly, the friendly attacks, and they get to see some of their attack strategies and everything. And um, Jeff was the one that was pretty much dictating who was going to be in the war and who was not going to be in the war. So when he, when he saw a few of the guys' attacks, he didn't really like what he saw. And he was real friendly about it, but he basically said, all right, you need to opt out of the war. You're, you're not going to be in the war until you figure out how to do your attack better, upgrade your troops or, or something. So that's the first step, is that they're not bringing everyone to war. They're not gonna, they don't allow everyone to opt in. Uh, I know with our clan, we bring everyone that we can, anyone that's opt-in, and that hits the numbers. So, we, if, if you know, if we have 27 opt-in, we'll have to either drop a couple or add a couple to get to that uh, 30. So, or 25, because you know how it is now. They don't have the, they don't have it on on the fives anymore. Uh, there's a couple of them that are on the tens for the for the war party. So uh, looking up and down uh, the lineup, they three-starred everyone in war except for number one. And so that leads me to think that they've probably got a lot of wipes out there where they've wiped the entire other clan, three-starred them up and down the lineup. Uh, this next attack is by your mama. He's a Town Hall 11. Uh, he's, attack he's attacking a Town Hall 10. And I'm going to get into the matchups too because I, I, I watched all the attacks from two wars. You know, you can't watch more than two when you first join a clan. And um, I saw something similar, so, and we'll get into that a little bit in a second here too. But uh, on this one here, this is a double bowler walk. This is a really popular attack for Town Hall 11s. It, it was really popular when the when the bowlers were really OP. But right now, you know, bow, bowlers are still great troops, especially in Town Hall 11, because you can use the warden ability once they get to the core. That that makes them invincible for those of you that don't know, and that will push them through the infernal towers and some of the really damaging defenses that's right there in the core of the base. So that's what he does. Use the use the warden's ability. Gets the bowlers to go push through the middle of the base. And um, I've already seen this attack. It's amazing. He I think he has half his troops left at the end of the attack. He hadn't used the queen's ability yet. This is just a total blow through. And uh, for those of you that are Town Hall 10, you can have a max Town Hall 10. And when these 11s drop down to the Town Hall 10s, they can really beat you up. Um, I know that in our clan, 
I'm a Town Hall 10. I sit up at the top of the clan, top five or six usually. And if, and if a Town Hall 11 decides that they're going to attack me, if they have good tactics, there's not much I can do. Because because the warden is really the the game changer for the town hall 11s. That warden ability may not seem like much because it's only a few seconds, but a few seconds of invincibility really just gets it done in the core. Now this next attack is actually done on the uh, on the guys in the clan. So what I did is I shrunk the size of the screen so you can't see who the attack was on, uh, only because I, I don't you know you can see the traps and you can see all the stuff. So I don't want I don't want to give away the base to anyone. If it was one of our guys, we don't really care, but I don't know if these guys would get offended by that. So, you can't see who it was on, um, but this is a fantastic attack. I know it wasn't the, the clan that I'm in attacking, but I, I want to bring as the best attacks that I can see. And this right here is a is a La, a La Luna attack, but what was so good about it was the manipulation of the kill squad. And I, he got really deep into the base. And what he does is he targets one of the air defenses, he targets the queen, and, and he tries to take out one of the, the inferno towers. And when you're using the La Luna attack, it's really important, especially when you're attacking a high level base, like a Town Hall 10 or 11, to use your kill squad to get as deep into the base as you can, and take out one, sometimes two of these air defenses. Um, I've even seen the kill squad take out three, because people are, it's, it's kind of popular to, to lopside your base and put three air defenses on one side and one on the other. And you'll tempt them to go on the ground to go after the air defenses. And you can set up your base and set up traps that way. So I, you see it a lot more now. It's a lot more common than the evenly spread out air defenses. Uh, now, a suggestion from my experience in the past month now. If you are not getting attacked with the Laloon, um, you will. And you need to you need to be prepared for it. If your air defenses are on the outside of the base, in other words, if there's not at least a row of defenses, or, or it can't it cannot be uh, behind collectors or storages because they're using balloons. They go right over those. You need to have several defenses in front of the air defenses that will stall out the balloons a little bit, and then hopefully uh, your your defenses can 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 help help out the air defenses a little bit just by giving the balloons something else to go for before they end up on top of the air defenses so get those air defenses pulled back a little bit and that also helps with the queen the queen walk uh, I know when the queen walk was really popular you see a lot of people pulling their air defenses out towards the outside of the base in hopes that the queen would pass by and the air defenses would take out the healer well we know now that's faulty and you have to keep those air defenses at least seven or eight uh, tiles back. If not, the queen can reach over over the walls and and, and take out the air defenses with her uh, with her attack. So get those air defenses off the edge. If not, you're just giving that three star away. We've had really good players get three star because the air defenses were too close to the edge, and they're they can easily overpower it with uh, they can easily overpower it with uh, a couple of lava hounds and some balloons. So, I went into the challenges on these next couple of attacks, just to show you some more. I mean, these guys have had tons of talent. Um, this next one was by who was this by? It's by Genesis, attacking someone else in the clan. Uh, this is a Town Hall Nine Laloon. I sped through it a little bit at the beginning, uh, just because this is a real common attack, but. Just wanted to show everyone just how simple these these attacks can be. Um, this is not a multi-stage complex attack that you can't understand. Okay, uh, but he put in a, a a big line of balloons, and then as soon as he spawned the balloons, he got the lava. He dropped the lava hounds, and they're so fast they cross over in front of the balloons, and they sit on top of the air defenses. They protect the balloons and. Uh, with some good timing on your spells and make sure you're bringing hay spells um, there's a lot of debate over the right spells and uh, I, I think uh, there's a few things that I'd like you guys to try out there make sure you use hay spells but also try to put a heal spell in there too there's a lot of debate on whether or not the heal spells actually work but I'm here to tell you if they have a Tesla farm which is which that's four Teslas all grouped together if you put a heal spell over the Tesla farm, the balloons will live through it most of the time. 
So that's a great place to put a heal spell. I know that it sounds odd to put a heal spell in balloons, but it actually works really well. Keep them alive. Now, it won't, it won't help them with the, with the air defenses. The air defenses will still take them out. But there are other defenses, like the Wizard Tower. Wizard Towers do tons of damage to balloons because they're hitting them all at one time. But a heal spell will keep them healed right through the Wizard Tower. So you can go through some of these obstacles that you have that beat up balloons with that, with that heal. Now, before the end of the video, it's coming towards the end now. So, you have guys joining, and at this point you had Jeff basically dictating to them who can be in the war and who cannot. Now, as I'm looking up and down their lineup, they have a lot of heavy point fives. I'm not going to say they're completely engineered to where they don't have any defenses and they're just all offense. They, it wasn't like that. Their, their bases were usually half to three quarters of the way in uh, a level in front in other words if it's a town hall 10 they had town hall 9 defenses or the town hall 10 troops and they were pretty heavy on the t on the on that one level ahead and a lot of the guys in the clan were like that so uh, they had a so in comparison they had a really heavy offense compared to defense well what Supercell has done now is they've changed the algorithm in their matchmaking and the the two clans that I saw them fight were really really close to them so in other words they had the same type of layout as they did they had a lot of point fives or really heavy point fives to where they had the Town Hall 9 defenses and they had all maxed out Town Hall 10 and even some Town Hall 11 uh, troops so if you decide that you want to start focusing on uh, engineering the clan by pushing your offense way ahead of the defense, yes, you can do it. Yes, it is working. It's working great for these guys. But it's more who they're bringing instead of just the base. So remember that. Uh, you can have the greatest bases in the world, but if you bring in everyone in the clan and half of them can't war, then you're not going to get these win streaks. So they're being very particular who they take into the clan wars and they're also getting matched up. And the other point was they're getting matched up against other engineer clans too. So I wanted to try to take away that the dirty word of engineer clan. These are this is a great clan. These guys work really hard to get where they are. They're not cheating the system, they're not cheating other clans. Uh, they're just putting out what they think is their best opportunity to win. And they're doing a fantastic job of winning. So uh, hats off to Ultimate Goal. Uh, really enjoyed the short time I was in there with them. And uh, coming to the end of the video, I'm exhausted. At, I think it's like 4 in the morning, guys. <laughs> so anyway, hope you enjoyed it. If you stayed to the end, I appreciate that. Uh, thanks to you guys in the clan that, that subbed to the channel. And uh, until next time, it's been easy. Take care, everyone.